How do nuclear states develop nuclear weapons without nuclear testing? In order to develop new and also improve and fine-tuning already existing nuclear weapons designs, there are experiments that mimic nuclear weapons on a laboratory scale and ultra-fast computer platforms that simulate weapon performance. The numerical models used in the computer simulations are continuously calibrated by experiments and should allow better predictions of nuclear weapon performance, including the virtual testing of a warhead. Some experiments are aimed at understanding the physics of fission weapons and focus on the fast compression of fissile, or a surrogate material. The shock waves traveling through the material can be x-rayed in appropriate hydrodynamic facilities and can deliver multiple snapshots of the imploding target. These so-called x-ray radiographies allow the control of the symmetry of the implosion process as well as its speed and allow inferences on the performance of a fission primary. Thermonuclear weapons can also be simulated to a certain extent in a so-called inertial confinement fusion ICF experiment, where high-power lasers produce similar extreme physical conditions to those within a detonating hydrogen bomb. ICF facilities are to maintain weapons and suited to design new warheads. Weapon physicists need to understand the process of a nuclear explosion, and typically, their major experimental tools are nuclear tests. Every test yields a lot of data about the warhead and its materials within the extreme conditions of a nuclear explosion. Examples of this are data on temperature, pressure, ionization, propagation of radiation, fission and fusion rates, the interdependence between these values and their time dependence, and more. The possibility of theoretical extrapolation of such data is limited, because the interaction between the physical parameters is complex and depends on specific properties of the matter involved. The equations of state that describe the properties of materials at extreme conditions in a nuclear explosion may differ substantially from those in normal conditions. Therefore, theoretical and computational results always need an adjustment through experimental data. An experiment that can serve this purpose is called inertial confinement fusion, ICF. It simulates the extreme physical conditions of a nuclear explosion to a certain extent, but on a smaller scale. Briefly described, in an ICF experiment, high-power laser beams compress and heat up a small container of material, typically a deuterium-tritium DT, mixture, called the pellet. The fundamental physical descriptions are the same as in the ignition and explosion of a secondary in a nuclear weapon. The result is the creation of small, very hot, and dense plasma, in which, provided the laser power is large enough, conditions come near to those in the explosion of a secondary. Such experiments allow some of the processes that take place in the explosion of a thermonuclear device to be studied. Examples are fusion rates, heating and compression, or radiation flow. However, there are also some differences. Firstly, in ICF, the extreme conditions are only achieved in a tiny volume. Secondly, only a few processes isolated from other processes can be studied. In contrast, in a nuclear explosion, additional processes take place and all of them interact with each other. Therefore, in an ICF experiment, the interaction between the processes must be extrapolated using computer data based on decades of nuclear testing data which are readily available. The ICF data can be used to fine-tune parts of computer codes and to understand the range of applicability of computer models. ICF experiments clearly help to improve and design new nuclear warheads as they are getting more and more sophisticated over time. ICF facilities, with the world's most powerful lasers, are currently active in the U.S., France, and the U.K., the largest international ICF experimental facilities is National Ignition Facility NIF in the U.S. NIF's arena-sized building houses 192 laser beams designed to deliver 1.8 megajoules of ultraviolet laser energy and 500 terawatts of power to millimeter-sized targets located at the center of its 10-meter diameter target chamber. Its conditions of temperature and density come closer to those of thermonuclear weapons than those of any previous facility, and ignition is already achieved. Ignition means that the energy released by fusion will be at least as large as the laser energy input. 
This is regarded as a milestone, allowing more confidence in experimental results, especially refinement of computer codes. Fusion is an essential process in modern nuclear weapons and achieving ignition will advance U.S. national security in at least two ways. First, it will lead to laboratory experiments that help National Nuclear Security Administration defense programs continue to maintain confidence in nuclear deterrent, acquiring invaluable knowledge and designing new weapons without nuclear explosive testing. And second, it underpins the credibility of deterrent by demonstrating world-leading expertise in weapons-relevant technologies. Thanks for your attention, and see you next time.